In this video, we will create a simple tracing using AutoCAD. What is the point of tracing? You will often need flat orthographic representations, such as a front or side view of an object for elevations. Tracing an image file in AutoCAD provides practical details for drawing development. Another good use of tracing objects is logo development for title blocks. It is worth noting here that AutoCAD does not retain embedded image files well. This means that using a JPEG, PNG, TIFF, EPS, or even a PDF file embedded into the AutoCAD drawing file can yield unexpected results. The image may not print properly, or you may need to relink the reference each time you open the DWG file. Ultimately, all logos should have a vector version, which means it is outlined and not made up of pixels. I think you'll find that the practicality of tracing in AutoCAD is almost endless with possible ways of usage, but one last important example is when you need to create a vicinity map, such as this example of the state of Arizona. When you need to be able to pinpoint where a project is to be located, it is a requirement to show a vicinity map on the general notes page of a construction sheet set for permitting purposes. Now that you know why you might need to trace an object, let's get started with a simple tracing exercise. First, select an object that you'd like to replicate as a drawing. To prep the image file, make sure you crop the raster image so that you have isolated mainly the part of the geometry that you wish to trace. I've used an architectural column. Even though this is a classic Doric column, the geometry is basic enough that I can modify it in the future to a variety of different styles later, such as a more simple column in the arts and crafts style. In AutoCAD, open a blank drawing. Always check the units and the precision to make sure you're working in architectural units with a 1 64th inch precision. Save the file as the project name so the file is being written to a specific place in your hard drive directory. Open the Layer Property Manager, create two layers. You will need a layer to place the image file reference and an additional layer for the tracing line work. Select a color assignment for the tracing layer that is easy for you to see. I like tracing with the magenta index color number 6. Make the image layer the current layer. Draft construction lines to define the area or limits of the tracing. This is an important step. For example, when you place an image file in AutoCAD, it is difficult to gauge just how large the file is within model space. Notice if I just place the image of the column into the file without a measured line or rectangle as a reference, the image could be quite large. Let's take a distance measurement here. Therefore, always start with a reference line or a rectangle to use as a guide for placing the image. If we are using the column as part of the logo, then consider how large the space is that is allocated for the logo, which is around 2 inches by 2 inches area. Alternatively, if you are using the column as part of an interior elevation, the column is probably between 9 feet and 12 feet tall. From my experience, it's always easier to scale a traced image up in size. I've found that scaling a detailed tracing down represents problems. Sometimes the arcs and splines become disproportionately scaled and can look like a mess. Therefore, I'm going to start with a set of construction lines that are 9 feet by 3 feet. This could easily be scaled down to a logo if needed and is a drawing ready for an elevation. 
Now that I have the construction lines laid out, I will insert the image file. Pick on one corner of the construction lines and slowly drag your mouse until the image is approximately the right size. Do not panic if the image is a little larger or smaller than the construction lines. Keep in mind that you are limited to the image aspect ratio to begin with, so the overall image might be off a little bit in comparison to the construction lines. This is to be expected. Once you have the image placed in the DWG file, save the file. Try to remember to conduct quick saves of the file often, which is Control S on a PC or Command S on a Mac. The next thing to do is go to the Layer Property Manager and set the image transparency between 50 and 80%. You will need to see both the image and the line work as you trace. Reducing the opacity of the image will help immensely. Finally, lock the image layer. If you don't see the lock column option on a Mac, you may need to take a look at the visibility options in the layer manager. This is not typically an issue on a PC, but will need to be demonstrated in this instance in AutoCAD Mac. Make sure the layer panel is deployed by typing at the command line LA return key. Locate the lower right hand corner icon of the layer property manager and pick on it. From the flyout menu, choose view options. Make sure you have the transparency and lock options columns checked. You can see each of the categories that I typically work with here. Each layer option that I think is essential to be deployed in the Layer Property Manager is checked here. Each of these categories listed is represented as a column in the Layer Properties panel. This will help you control visibility and productivity of layer objects within the drawing. Within the Layer panel, you should now have the image layer highlighted. Change the opacity for that layer to approximately 80%. And then lock the layer. Make the tracing layer current. Begin with the line and arc tools and use the image as your guide. You will find that you use the three-point arc tool and the line tool a lot in most tracing exercises. The fillet command is also a handy tool. You can watch me trace this image using the AutoCAD draw and modify commands. Oh snap settings that you might find useful are the following, endpoint, midpoint, and perpendicular. Keep in mind we are only drafting the front of the object and not the side or the depth of the object. You cannot use the object in the elevation view if you are drafting the depth of the object, since an elevation drawing is a flattened orthographic view. Just ignore the side of the object as you trace out the image. The video will speed up here. You can see that I try different pick points as I'm laying out the three-point arcs. This is not an exact science. As a tip, I typically keep the OSNAP toggled on throughout most of the tracing process, but you should try to get comfortable toggling the OSNAP F3 key on and off as needed, as well as the Ortho F8 key. When you are drafting lines, the Ortho F8 key should probably be toggled on, but when you are working with a three-point arc, I find that the ortho key being toggled off is more helpful.
Remember, you do not have to exactly trace the image. If you zoom out a bit from the close-up view, then you will see that the overall view looks quite good. Be patient with yourself as you try different draw and modify commands to help you achieve the overall effect. Again, toggling on and off the OSNAP F3 key and the ortho F8 key will help you develop a smooth drafting rhythm. Another helpful tip is try not to trace every single detail. Keep in mind that the detail you are tracing will most likely be shown at a scale between one quarter inch equals a foot all the way up to three quarters of an inch equals one foot at the largest. So too many details will not print well. We are trying to achieve enough detail for the object's geometry and style to be recognizable but not too much that when plotted, it appears as a blobby mess. A good rule of thumb is to think of a coloring book outline. Just enough detail for interest. You will notice that my strategy was to draft one entire side of the architectural column. I then used the mirror command to replicate the opposite side of the object. This strategy is good for two reasons. First, I finish the tracing in approximately half the amount of time. Secondly, the object is now symmetrical. Object symmetry is much more important than finishing the task quickly. As you develop a good strategy and rhythm for the tracing, do not be afraid to modify parts of the drafting, such as you see me do here. Instead of three-point arcs on the front of the column, I am switching them out for orthographic horizontal lines. In my opinion, this fits better to use in an orthographic drawing, such as an elevation. I will, however, retain the arcs along the side of the column, as these help to define the profile of the feature. I will finish up the demonstration of how I trace the image. Keep in mind that you might engage a different strategy and use different draw modification commands to achieve similar results. These are the commands that I think work for me to achieve the desired outcome. The next part of the video will help if you have difficulty seeing the tracing over the top of the image. Let's take a short hyperpause here. Sometimes when you start tracing an image, it might appear as if the line work has disappeared. This is not the case. Instead, what is actually happening is that the tracing is just located beneath the image file. That is okay, and we can fix the perceived issue. So if you do not see the lines you are drafting, then you will need to do this next step. At the command line, type draw order, all one word, return enter key. Make a selection box to try to lasso or window the line work. Once you've ascertained that you've got some line work selected, then pick on the return enter key. Choose the option bring to front or front. That should do it, but if you still cannot see the line work, it happens that sometimes you have to unlock the image layer and use the draw order command to send the image to the back. If you need to do this, just remember to lock the image layer again before you resume tracing. This is what the tracing looks like once you are finished tracing as much detail as you want to have in the final geometry. I recommend not overdoing the details. Keep in mind that the final plotted scale of the drawing. You don't want lots of closely placed lines to print as a blobby mess on your drawing. It's just wasted details. When you're done with the tracing, it is time to lock the tracing layer. Next, we want to unlock the image layer because we're going to get rid of the image or the photograph, which we no longer need. So to get rid of the embedded image, type at the command line XREF.
highlight the image file in the reference panel, and then right mouse click to see the flyout menu of choices. Choose Detach. Alternatively, you can highlight the image file name and pick on the Detach icon located at the top of the reference panel. Next, erase all construction guidelines. They are no longer needed and should not be part of the final block definition. Once you've detached the image file and erased all the construction lines, then unlock the tracing layer and make layer zero the current layer. We are now going to make the tracing into an insertable right block or W block. At the command line, type W block, return enter key. Follow the steps from a previous lesson on how to create a W block if you need a refresher. Also, feel free to add a description to the W block if you are inclined here. Then pick on the OK button on a PC or the Write Block button on a Mac. You are done with the tracing and have created a W block of the object to be used in future projects. If you want to use an elevation drawing, simply use the insert command in the next elevation file. Now that you know how to trace an object, you may find many usages for this strategy. One final professional tip that I can offer is, if you have a drawing that you want to make into a raster image, there are at least three different AutoCAD commands that you can use to convert the vector image for the drawing into a raster image, which is made up of pixels. So when converting an AutoCAD drawing into a raster image, the important thing to know is that the colors you've assigned to the background and to the layers will become part of the raster image when you make the conversion. You can see that my background is a cream color. When I use any of the raster image commands, the cream background becomes part of the image. So I recommend, before converting to a raster image, make the background white and the line work black. Remember, to change the background color, use the Options command in AutoCAD. The commands for converting AutoCAD line work into raster images are the following, JPEG out, or PNG out, or TIFF out. Play around with the conversion commands as well and have fun. The lesson recap on tracing images in AutoCAD includes architectural detailing for orthographic drawing types, logo development for title blocks, site and vicinity maps for general information sheets, and development of WBlock library of images useful for architectural and interior design presentation drawings.